My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette Church here in South Los Angeles. Today is Monday, August 17th. For those of you who were with us last week, you may think that you're looking at the same uh, stained glass window, but actually we've gone 180 degrees to the stained glass window on the opposite side, on the east side. And instead of two depictions, there are three in this one. I'll take a little time later to describe them, but this is uh, St. Bernadette's encounter with the Holy, with, um, the Holy Mother. This is um, a picture of her when she became a nun, and this is a picture of her in the home they lived in um, in France. So, But we'll get back to these and discuss these more thoroughly. But let us begin, as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break open the scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, by a sudden blow. I am taking away from you the delight of your eyes, but do not mourn or weep or shed any tears. Groan in silence, make no lament for the dead. Bind on your turban, put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your beard, and do not eat the customary bread. That evening, my wife died, and the next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Will you not tell us what all these things that you are doing mean for us? I therefore spoke to the people that morning, saying to them, Thus the word of the Lord came to me. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will now desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold of your pride, the delight of your eyes, the desire of your soul. The sons and daughters you left behind shall fall by the sword. Ezekiel shall be a sign for you. All that he did you shall do when it happens. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall do as I have done, not covering your beards, not eating the customary bread. Your turbans shall remain on your heads, your sandals on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall rot away because of your sins and groan one to the other. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You were unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger toward his sons and daughters. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. I, have, I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are. Sons with no loyalty in them, you have forgotten God who gave you birth. Since you have provoked me with their no God and angered me with their vain idols, I will provoke them with a no people and a foolish nation, I will anger them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit. 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A young man approached Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to earn eternal life? He answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked, Which ones? Jesus said, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I wish I could remember who said this so that I could give them credit, but somebody once said, we always have to be cautious because it's not about what we possess, it's about what possesses us. It's not about what we possess, it's about what possesses us. And I ask you to take a few moments and think, what would happen if some of the things that we had in life were taken away from us? What if we had to do without our cell phone? What if we had to do without our car or our cars? What if we had to do without our tablet? I'm recording you on a tablet right now. What would we do if we had to do without that? What would we, have to, what would we do if we had to do without our credit cards and just use money? And you're all thinking, go, your mom going a mile a minute. Well, uh, well you, you know, and, and I know that first one. Try sometime, and it's, it's a good Lenten exercise to fast from those things. Try sometime fasting from your iPhone for a day. Yeah, try si fasting from your cell phone for a day. Some of us would have trouble after an hour, be included, you know. Um, fasting from our tablets, uh, fasting from the TV, you know, our computers. I mean, fasting from a whole bunch of things, fasting from using our, our credit card or our, our money cards. How many things? own us rather than we own them how many things do we think we're more in control because we have these things and isn't that what they do they give us a sense of control when in fact they're controlling of us and that's what this young man is experiencing today jesus is saying you know what do you you know and he says i have great me he says give them all away and come and follow me now literally does that mean necessarily we're going to sell our house our cars we're going to live on the street and so on and so forth Yes, yes and no. <laughs> in the early church, that's what in fact happened. People gave, sold everything they had, put all the money into the coffers of the, you know, the organization of the church, and then everybody was given money back to live from. And it, I mean, it was communism with a little C, but it worked extremely well during the early church. So in a way, there is a literal, literalism to this about selling all that you have and follow me. And the early Christians believed that. But... Even so, we have to look to what are those things that are constantly controlled? You know, how are those things? We, we have become a world addicted to buying things. I mean, if it wasn't for, you know, Amazon and the Internet and so on, and particularly now during, during this pandemic, and don't get me wrong, in many ways some of those things are lifesavers right now because we can have water brought to our house and food brought to our house that we don't necessarily have to go out for, but it keeps us safe. And I come back to that first question. What do you own and what owns you? 
What controls you? What is those things, those addictions that you that we have to have that we can't go without? That maybe our maybe it's our car radio. I mean, I think of a think of a dozen different things that if you had to give them up for a day, what would you? what would happen. And that's one of the reasons why the early Christians believed in fasting. That's one of the reasons why we believe in fasting during Lent. And so many people think it's, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to eat fish. Well, no. Give up something meaningful. Give up, you know, your cell phone one day a week. And I know have people who have done that. I know people that have given up doing things they enjoy doing and took that money and donated it somewhere. But that's the whole point, my brothers and sisters. The thing that should own us is Christ. The thing that should own us is our faith. It shouldn't be a piece of electronics that owns our soul. It should be the good Lord above. And that's the question he asks. What owns you? My brothers and sisters, whenever that question is asked of us, we should always say, Christ. I belong to Christ. I don't belong to my phone. I don't belong to my laptop. I don't belong to my tablet. I don't belong to my smart car. I belong to Christ. And my brothers and sisters, our pathway to heaven is paved with those road signs. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, and for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligation of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws, their lives, be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, that they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, especially Connie Gallego, who's suffering with cancer right now, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions. For we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us come together and pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Made partakers of Christ through the sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.